Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about garbage collection. I'm going to open up my uh, website here to Java C Java, and believe it or not, garbage collection is <laughs> Not somebody coming and picking up your trash from the curb. It's actually a, a really popular thing here in Java. It has absolutely everything to do with the language. I'm going to click on the little pop-out menu here and select Java OOP Tutorials. And I'm going to scroll down here to the Garbage Collection Tutorial. So I want to begin by saying that this tutorial will introduce you to a many memory management concept that may as well be controlled by the Wizard of Oz. The topics of garbage collection and the finalized method go hand in hand, and I will cover the finalized method in the next tutorial. So what is garbage collection? Good question. In order to answer that, I first need to provide a brief explanation of a memory location called the heap. The heap is where your object data is stored. Every time you use the new operator to allocate and initialize an object, the Java Virtual Machine creates your new object in a memory space on the heap and returns a reference to where your object is located. The size of the heap memory is largely determined by the amount of memory available on the device that you are running the JVM on. In this case, your computer. So you have a pretty large heap, most likely. Um, let's begin by creating some new objects and displaying their object reference values to the console with when the no argument constructor is initialized. So I come down here and I'm going to select this simple code right here. Control C to copy after I highlight it. Let's move the browser off screen here. A shortcut to the command prompt here, but if you don't, you can right click on your desktop, select new shortcut, type in cmd, next finish. It's as easy as that. Let's go ahead and just open up that command prompt, type in uh, Java C. Java C will display a whole bunch of stuff if you've got it installed and configured properly. If not, if you get an error, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing with the tutorial. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. Backslash tells it to go to the root. Then we'll make a directory called Java with the MD command. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. We'll change directories to the Java folder. And I'm going to make a new directory, and I'm going to call this one uh, a garbage collection. Okay. We'll change directories to the garbage collection folder, and now I'm going to notepad a garbage collection.java file. Garbage collection.java is our source code file, also known as our compilation unit. Okay, let's hit Control V to paste. File, save this. There's two classes in the source code file. Um, my class box, and the only thing in the box is a constructor here, and it's a no argument constructor. And in the constructor's code block here, it's going to first call the statement super. Now, I haven't explained why to do this yet, but just trust me on that, I will get around to it. And then I've got uh, the print line method executing here, displaying this string literal. This object reference is located on the heap at, and then plus this. And if you remember from my this tutorials, by just displaying this, this contains a reference to the current object, okay? So, um, in the garbage collection class here, where, our, where we have our main method entry point here, we're just going to simply run a simple little for loop here. And it's gonna loop through six times, right? And just simply call the new operator and then the box um, constructor the new operator will allocate a, uh, some memory for the box object and execute the no argument box constructor here at, um, when it initializes the box object reference, right? And so let's go ahead and run this here so we can continue on with the next portion of this. Java C to compile this file. Java, we'll strip off that DOS class. Java is the JVM, Java Virtual Machine, Java Runtime, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be invoking the garbage collection class. Okay, so we're going to be getting, I'm going to grab a drink of water here. We're going to get um, 
six lines printed out here, right? With the string literal, this object reference is located on the heap at, and then the value of the <coughs> box reference that it created right there, right? Which is referenced by this. And so if, you, if you're not quite sure on what, what this does here, you'll definitely want to watch all my constructors and the two this tutorials, part one and part two. So I think I've got like five constructor tutorials and two this tutorials of part one and two, okay? But after you've watched those, this will be pretty self-explanatory what this is doing. So the first object that's created in the first for loop, right, is, is this one right up here, box at, and then whatever little memory address this represents here. The next iteration through it created another box at there, and another box, and another box at all these little memory addresses there, okay? Now each time we iterate through, it simply creates this, this box object, and then it creates the uh, reference, and then we display the reference to that box object. All right, now with that being said, I'm gonna pull back my website here. And we're gonna go through this next paragraph, which is a doozy here. So the numbers that you see after the box at represent some reference to a memory location on the heap. The numbers displayed to your console will most likely be different than the numbers displayed on my console. That is normal. So you most likely will have a different number here and here and here and here and here, right? Now keep running the program over and over again and you should see the exact same thing displayed to the console each and every time you run this simple program. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hit the uh, up arrow on my keyboard to just bring up the last thing we typed in there, right? And hit enter and do it again, right? And you can see um, the first one's always coming up with this thing ending in BFD, right? Every time I do that. And then the, this is the same, third's the same, fourth one's the same, fifth one's the same, and the sixth one is the same. So each time we run that, it's pointing to an object kind of at the same reference memory, reference location for the heap memory. Okay, um, let's come back to my website here and pick right up here. I'm gonna reread this last one here. So you should see the exact same thing displayed to the console each and every time you run the simple program. Each time you run the program, something is cleaning up the used heap memory and making it available for use again. That something is the automatic garbage collector. Basically, when the garbage collector decides to do its job, it looks at the heap memory and determines which objects are in use and which are not. It will leave an object that is still has an active reference alone, but if it finds an unreferenced object, it will delete that memory and reclaim it for use again. You can't force the garbage collector to do its job. Now there are times when the garbage collector falls asleep on the job and you run out of memory on the heap and your program crashes. I can tell you right now, it will happen to you. When it does, you have to deal with it at that time. As an example, I can tell you that working with very large megapixel image, image objects can quickly chew up your heap and crash your program in no time flat. Anyway, we could definitely see what the gar that the garbage collector is doing its job in this small, simple program. I'm gonna, before I read that last line here, I'm gonna move this off, and I'm gonna do one other thing here, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna clear our screen here. And just to, just to show you that it's, um, like if we come down here and it has nothing to do with this for loop, and we say, oop, What am I doing? I wanted to just simply put in a system.out.println, right? Uh, with some dashes in here. Right, okay. Okay, so now in the first, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and save this and recompile it there, so. Um, what I'm going to show you is that the garbage collector is running uh, basically sometime after the uh, static void main is completed or whatnot is what I'm guessing there. So if we create six more objects here, right, like we create the first six objects, they're done. I mean, they're, they've, they've displayed their value for all intents and purposes. You know, there's no reference variables pointing to them. There's no reason why the garbage collector can't step in right either right after this or right after this statement right and clean it all up so that we could end up with the same memory memory used here right but that won't happen as i'm about to show you here so let's go ahead and compile this again and let's run it again 
Okay, so as you can see, we've got these same six values that we originally started off with here, right? And then we did our system.out.print line, right? And in a, you know, it could have gone in and done its job there, but it chose not to. It just, we kept throwing more crap on the heap here, right? And so basically, if we run this again, we will see the exact same values come up again as we did the first time here, right, on all of those, because at some point in time, it, the um, garbage collector did, you know, get off its butt and do its job and clean everything up. So we ended up with the same memory, memory locations left again there. Um, we could do something really, really crazy, like, you know, uh, let's, let's just see what happens if we do like 10,000, you know, if we can probably, I'm just going to try to crash this. I don't think I will. My system has quite a bit of memory, 32 gigs on it. So I'm not sure how much is allocated for the Java virtual machine, but I think it's quite a bit. But basically, we are just throwing objects out of the heap like no tomorrow at this point in time, right? And um, threw like 10,000 of them on there. So it'd be interesting to see. I'm, I'm just kind of doing some curious testing here myself. If, if the last object will end in um, in B344, we'll remember that real quick here. We'll run it again. B344 is what we're looking for. I feel like I'm playing bingo. B344. So. Yep, sure enough. So yeah, I just have such a large amount of memory here on my machine, even though, you know, the box object really didn't chew up much memory but it's, it's cleaning it up and everything is available again there. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and leave you with the last sentence here as my final thought. So in my next tutorial, the finalized method tutorial, I will explain how to implement a method that should run just before the garbage collector reclaims the object memory, and should is the keyword there. So that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.